the next talk is uh, entitled Inverting HFE Systems is Quasi-Polynomial for All Fields by Jin Taiting and Timothy Hodges. And uh, the, the, the talk will be uh, made by both of them. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we want to present uh, a new result on the complexity of the direct algebraic attack on uh, uh, HEP systems over fields of arbitrary characteristics. So this generalizes a result uh, that was announced at Crypto 2006 by Grambolin, Zhu, and Stern. And I thank the previous speaker for the introduction to multivariate crypto systems, and I won't discuss too much about that. So uh, I'll present an introduction, and then Jintai will step in and talk about uh, main results and some future work. Okay, so basics of uh, the hidden field public key crypto systems. We have a pair of fields, F and K. Our base field has order Q, and K is of degree N over the base field. Uh, the private key is a univariate polynomial defined on uh, the larger field K. And the algebraic structure of that larger field is kept secret. Uh, so we, the other part of the private key is two invertible affine linear maps from K to Fn. The, private key, the public key then is the composition of these three maps which in terms of the underlying space uh, f to the n is a set of n multivariate uh, polynomials in the base field. So at this point, I want to emphasize that we'll always consider these polynomials as functions, so they'll be in the polynomial algebras factored out by the uh, field equations. Okay, so. An effective implementation of this is, uh, was given by Patron 15 years ago. Uh, so we require that the polynomial have low total degree d. This enables us to do efficient decryption uh, using standard algorithms uh, for solving univariate polynomials. And we also require that it p should be quadratic over the small field f. Uh, so that the, uh, <coughs> the public key polynomials PI are quadratic, which enables efficient encryption and relatively small key size. So putting all this together, it means that the polynomial has to have this form here, because these x to the qi are functions on k, which are not linear over k, but they're linear over the base field f. And so the quadratic functions are the products of two of those functions. So they look like x to the qi plus q to the j. And our condition here is the condition on the degree of the total degree of the polynomial, that its total degree should be less than or equal to d. So that's the basic setup that we want to analyze. <coughs> What's the attack? So the attack, the, the attack is just the basic uh, a Grosvenor basis. Uh, solution of the system of equations that we get from any ciphertext y1 up to yn, that gives us a, a set of n qu quadratic equations which we would like to solve to get back this, the plaintext xi. Now, in general, if this were a random system of n quadratic polynomials, this would be a very hard problem, but for HFE systems, they're not random systems. So the algorithm terminates significantly quicker on HFE systems than it would on random systems. So the problem for assessing the complexity is to try to understand how the restriction on the degree of the big polynomial P affects the complexity of this Grobner basis algorithm. So as I said, this was done uh, in 2006 by GJS. Uh, and they showed that it was quasi-polynomial when q is equal to 2. Now, their techniques didn't adapt very well to the general uh, base field situation, so it's remained open for a little while. 
And uh, so we want to generalize this result to an arbitrary base field and use, introduce some new techniques. So how do, how do we even get a grip of um, uh, the complexity of a Grobner basis algorithm? Well, <clears throat> we use something called the degree of regularity. Uh, essentially, the Grobner basis algorithm is roughly kind of looking through the ideal generated by the PIs for, uh, uh, for equations of smaller degree, which can help us solve quickly the system. So what we want to do is look for the first point at which we find a non-trivial degree for. So we find a combination of the PIs, which is uh, of smaller degree than we would expect. So there's some real cancellation going on. <clears throat> and we want to avoid the trivial degree falls where we get a combination equal to zero, or a degree fall uh, caused by the fact that PI raised to the power Q is equal to uh, PI. So avoiding those trivial degree falls uh, we're looking for the first point at which we have non-trivial degree falls. And it's been shown uh, experimentally that most of the time the Grobner basis algorithms terminate shortly after this degree. So this is a good marker for how quickly the Grobner basis algorithms are going to terminate. Uh, just a little bit of technical stuff that we need. This is really a question about the highest degree part of everything, so we can reduce to the associated graded ring, the, this truncated polynomial ring, and just look at the highest degree part of the PIs. Uh, this translates the concept of degree of regularity into a question about the existence of non-trivial relations in this uh, algebra, which is much easier to deal with algebraically. So the degree of regularity now is the first degree at which non-trivial relations occur between these PIHs. And we have the similar kind of trivial relations that we're trying to avoid in this case. OK, so these are the same thing. So that's what we're trying to find. Still, we don't know a whole lot about these PI functions. So that's not a good place to look for a solution. What we have to do is lift back up to the larger field. And this is actually not such a complicated operation. It's just uh, tensoring with the larger field and using a little Galois theory enables us to re-express the degree of regularity of these PIs in terms of uh, the original function and its translates under the Galois group or the Frobenius maps. In addition, we, we need to use this kind of intuitive uh, but not completely obvious how to prove result that the degree of regularity of a set is bounded by the degree of regularity of any subset. So this was a basis of the ideas in uh, GJS's result, and it was recently very neatly uh, uh, detailed by Dubois and Gamma in their recent paper about this subject. OK, so now we combine that with this uh, extension of the, the field. And uh, <clears throat> so let's look at bring back our original polynomial p of x and look at p0 of x, which is the quadratic form associated to this part of p of x. OK, so uh, the degree of regularity that we're looking for is actually equal to the degree of regularity of p0, and it uh, translates under the Galois group in this algebra here. So putting all this together, we get the kind of rather unexpected result that the degree of regularity, well, no, expected result of the degree of regularity that we're looking for is bounded by the degree of regularity of this single quadratic form here. Now, this shouldn't, doesn't look as if it would give us interesting information, but it turns out to give us very useful information. And I'll now pass it on to uh, Jintai to tell the rest of the story. Thanks. Um, so what Tim has talked about uh, um, by now is uh, was everything done before. Uh, so what I will talk about is what we have done after that. Um, I'll present first our main um, theory. Okay? Basically, what we did is we give a global upper bound on the degree of regularity in the sense of uh, uh, Dubois and Gamma for the HFE system. And the main theory are given as the following. So the degree of regularity of the system defined by P is bounded by the following formula. Rank of P0. So remember the P0 introduced earlier is, is uh, um, a, bi a bilinear form. So if you uh, 
view it as a matrix and it has a rank. And then times Q minus one over two plus two. So this is the main results I was. So here I would like to really and especially point out the importance of Q here. In the previous result, this Q was never used in any form. And um, in the result presented by um, Drew and 4J on the algebraic attacks on HFE system, uh, where they only discussed a case Q equal two, but what they said seemed to suggest it works for all the Qs, which means the degree of regularity is independent of the size of the field. And our formula suggests otherwise. Um, so those are universal bounds that require no additional assumption, which means we prove this formula without any ad additional mathematical assumption on the degree of regularity. Um, before I um, present the basic idea of the proof, I would like to say a little bit more what uh, was done before. So GGS, what they did basically, they outlined a new way to study or to bound the degree of, of the case Q equal to two. And their approach is very interesting in the sense that what they realize is that since HFE design is over the bigger field, therefore you must lift the problem back to the bigger field to look at what's going on. And they sketch a way to connect the degree of regularity of the HFE to the degree of regularity of the lifted system over the bigger field. So here I would like to emphasize the, the word I use, sketched. And uh, with this idea, they use the following mathematical assumption, um, which I will not say one by one due to the time constraint. And the, the key things they derive are heuristic and symptotic bounds for the degree of regularity uh, for the degree of regularity for the case Q equal two. That's what they did, okay? And uh, um, to study the case for genuine Q is still a very um, open problem. And uh, after the work was done, um, me with my colleagues Dieter Schmidt and uh, uh, Fabian Warner, a student at TU Darmstadt, we found something very interesting, which means we did some experiments. What we found out is that the prediction of uh, um, Jew and uh, for J didn't work for the case if Q is a, a finite field of other characteristics, for example, 13, 31. And why is so? What we realize that is what is called the role of the field equation. So in the algebraic text presented by Forget and uh, Jew, they implicitly use the field equation. Namely, they're not solving equations with n variables, n equations. They're solving equations with n variables, two n equations. And if Q change, which means if Q is large, you can do the same. But in the case of GF2, your field equation is also degree two. Therefore, it can be efficiently used. But if Q is 31, then you will have 10 uh, additional n degree Q equations. And they cannot be efficiently used because of degree constraints. But mathematically speaking, that means you are not solving the equation of the finite field. Instead, you are solving the equation of the extension field of the finite field. And in that case, the number of solutions actually is two to the n. Therefore, it becomes a much harder problem. So also in terms of the understanding the degree of rarity, there's no and sometimes analysis for the case of other Q, okay? And uh, in terms of my opinion, a real breakthrough happened in the case of Fujinino Q is the work done by Dubois and uh, Gamma, okay? What they did in the H script last year is present a very rigorous mathematical foundation for the argument of GGS, okay? And they present a new method to compute the degree of rarity. This is an inductive computing method, but it does not give us a closed formula to tell us the, and, uh, the behavior of the degree of rarity. Okay? And uh, our approach is the following simple observation. What we realize is that because of the theorem pre uh, previously presented is the degree of rarity of this set of polynomials is less than the degree of the single polynomial P0. So what we did is that we just try to find the bound for the degree of rarity of the single polynomial, which, which is a P0. And our proof is also very different from what was done before. The proof done before relies on the continuum dimensions of certain spaces. What we did is we just did a construction, which means we construct explicitly non-trivial syzygies. And to show that the degree indeed falls at this, at this point, okay? So the construction means, means I will find a low degree non-trivial annihilator in the associated grade algebra for P0, okay? And uh, uh, this set of construction relies on the following mathematical uh, structure, which means 
we use so-called the classification of quadratic forms of a finite field. Okay, and this is where the rank comes in play the roles. Um, I just give a um, brief idea how the proof is done. So given the polynomial, quadratic polynomial, you, you have the following theorem in the case of Q is even that they are, must be into the following canonical form. Okay, let's look at the case when the rank is four. If the rank is four, given any quadratic polynomial you can convert in this form, which means x1 x times x2 plus, three, uh, plus x3 times x4. The question is how to construct the non-trivial strategy. And it's pretty simple. Those are the guys. Those are the annihilators, which is x1 to the q minus 1 times x3 to the q minus 1, and the rest are very similar. What you, did, what you do here is basically you find the crossing terms. You choose one term from the first one and another term from the second one, and you raise the power of q minus 1. And then here you can observe easily that if you multiply this point by this guy, they will become zero because you, after you multiply them, you can see here that um, you have x1 to the q here and the x3 to the q here, and there's a degree 4 that occurs. Okay, and that's it. So this is the basis of our proof. And this is imp basically implies other idea we use here. Of course, um, in terms of the mathematical um, rigorous, we must prove this annihilator is non-trivial, which is a little bit hard in, the, in general cases. Okay, so now what is uh, the implication of our, our result? If you look at the degree of regularity formula, you realize if you fix Q, the degree of regularity is O log Q to the D. And let me emphasize again, if Q is fixed. In this case, you can see that the complexity is indeed a quasi polynomial. But what we've shown is something very different here in terms of our theory is if you make the Q change, as in the case of a lattice um, crypto systems, let's assume if Q itself is of, of the scale of ON, then suppose the bound is good, then we have reached a very different conclusion, which means inverse HRV systems will be exponential instead of quasi polynomial. Okay, so we present a very different idea to look at the HFE now, which means when you design HFE, you should not fix the size of field. Instead, you should change your size of field Q according to the size of the vector space, which is the N. Okay, this is a, okay. And now I want to point out a few things related to our bound. First, I want to emphasize our bound is not optimal. Why is so? Because in the proof itself, you notice we only use one, one polynomial, P0. There are P0, P1, and the other polynomials. We never use it. So therefore, this is definitely not optimal. Okay? And uh, in the work of um, Dubois and Gamma, they made a very detailed list of uh, degree reality they computed. So we did a comparison of their, their result with our result. Of course, their result should be better than ours, because their result is global. We only use one polynomial, they use all the polynomials. But however, we find something very interesting, which means uh, in the old result, we have seen as m becomes large, and our bounds have become very close to their bound. Okay, so we don't know exactly what's happening, but I think it's very important that we, we should study what has been the, the connection between these two bounds. Okay, now I was um, finishing the talk with a little bit mention of future work. Okay, so after this was done, um, I did some work in the case of if you are polynomial equals f, px equal to x squared. In this case, I can actually prove not our upper bound, but a lower bound, or exact bound, which means I can prove in the case of a square, which, where px is equal to x square, inverting the HRV system algebraically is actually exponential. Okay? And then in another joint work with uh, um, Kleinion, we now can prove the, uh, the degree of regularity for the case of HV minus. And Hodges and did some other work related to the extension of our result. Um, what is really important, I think, in the future is that we need to really need to do a very good comparison with the DG's result, which means we want to know how good our bound is. And it's possible we can find uh, better bounds. And also we feel there's a possibility we can apply our techniques to other systems uh, and prove our security-related problems. And uh, of course, I have to thank the people who provide me with money to do this. And uh, uh, here I would in particular thank Vivian Dubois and Nicholas Gamma. Uh, for the send, because they sent me the paper before it was published and for numerous discussion with them and uh, it was extremely helpful and thank you very much. So we have time for one question. Three weeks ago, uh, yes. Betale, Fujere and Peret published complete cryptanalysis on, on FS, uh, uh, HFE. 
Do you know that result? Uh, what's, what's the result again? Complete cryptanalysis with a practical break. After nine days, they, they break uh, the most conservative parameters with N256. Uh, which system? HFE. Uh, what is the, the dumb, what's D? What is the D? HFE. Yeah, HFE has a, yeah. has a degree yeah. D there. Yeah, what yeah. is the D? I don't know what is the D. No, that's, I think if you if I ask Harry, that's the paper attack the D equal to two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a mean binary, binary, Yeah, that's a mean. That's a mean run attack. My question is how yeah. that work relates with your work. Ah, the, the, so what? Why? What we say here is remember I said is it is a complexity of the algebraic attack on HFE system. For there's a, for HFE system there's another major attack which was developed first by Kibnis Shamir and which I can call it mean rank attack. And if you look at the Q, uh, as I said, the rank Q0 I used earlier, it's the, if the rank is very low, one, two, and there's an exist attack due to Kipnis Shamir, which is that we should use the property of the no rank to attack the problem, okay? And there's work done by myself to show that actually Kipnis Shamir um, attack doesn't work, again, due to the field equations. And then, um, uh, for Jay and the parade, um, and they also did some work to show that in one of the instances of the square system, it was broken. In this case, the rank is equal to two, or equal to one, fx equal to x square. And uh, actually, it's very interesting in that if you read the paper very carefully, that they show the attack on the system, mean rank of the system, and they show the complexity, and you realize the complexity is actually has exponential growth. That only means, to me, that only means the parameter we choose was too conservative. So if we choose a parallel properly, it should be no problem. This is my opinion. Okay, thanks. Let's thank the speaker again. The speaker. Thank you.